Thanks Deepthu for your wonderful email. As you already know, I have been suffering from low grade ovarian cancer for over 8 years now. I feel tired most of the time. I fill up with ascites two or three times a year. Have developed all kinds of complications including severe bouts of diarrhea. Few people have lived as long as I have with continuing ovarian cancer. I have had a good life and I really don't dread death but I have one single desire which I know will never be fulfilled. As you begin to develop more problems is it a sign that death is near? Why should you think death is near? You are a true fighter. You have the will to live. People like you are an encouragement to us. And I don't know about your desire, but I'm sure it will come true. I too have a desire, a dream. To see my name on the cover of my first novel. <laughs> Doctors say my days are numbered. Well, so be it. I live life to the least. Well, Shrati. Contrary to your desires, I don't even wish to live long. I, I, I think I made that quite clear in our last internet chat. So let it be over, this sorry, painful existence. <laughs> See what I mean? Hello. Hello, Dipto. Shatidi. Hope I'm not disturbing you. No, not at all. Pleasant surprise, actually. How's life? Oh, excellent. My nephew takes very good care of me. But what about you, dear? Have you taken your medicines? Yeah, pretty fine now. Much relaxed today. Uh, can I ask you a question? Yeah. Dipto, why do you live alone? Oh, don't fuss. My friends visit me all the time. Bit of a problem, that. You see, I have to finish my book fast. Don't worry, dear. Everything will be all right. Um, <coughs> Raj Shakur Babu called up the other day. He's so matter-of-fact and... Uh, cynical. <laughs> but Shatidi, who knows? There might be reasons behind his cynicism. Yeah, that could be true. Anyway, sorry for disturbing you. You you carry on with your writing and take care, okay? You know something, Shatidi? Your voice reminds me of my mother. Why don't you come over to my place sometime? Yeah, why not? Mm. Okay, just remember we are meeting tomorrow. Well, let me take you to a new place then. Yeah. Well, that's a surprise. Oh, good. I like surprises. <laughs> Bye. Shatidi, sorry if I'm intruding, but you once told me you had a desire that can never be fulfilled. Did I now? <laughs> well, it's private. Come on, please, Shatidi. Yes, Shati, we all need to open up, don't we? <sighs> well, I... 
I want to meet a man once, just once, whom I used to know very well about 35 years ago. <laughs> what? You two never got married? Why? Oh, uh, come on, whatever gave you that idea? <laughs> come on, Shatidi, what really happened? Yeah, we all need to know, yes, what happened? <sighs> It's a long story. I I don't think I want to bother you with it. <laughs> but of late, I have been thinking of him very often. I I really wish I could meet him only once. <laughs> Are you allowed to know his name, where he works, whatever he does and all that? <laughs> Well, I think he still lives in Kolkata. A friend of mine saw him very recently. So what's he like? Yeah, so what's he like? Uh, uh, there's nothing much to tell. But at one time, I couldn't imagine my life without him. But then... Then what? I don't know. Probably life made us drift apart. <laughs> the sword. <sighs> Come on, Raj, don't give that dirty look. Amit, Amit Abhu, he wasn't a bad sort, really. <laughs> no. Okay. But where'd you meet him? Yeah, where? In the university, where else? One day, in class, our professor, Deepak Mitro. He was teaching us Shakespeare's sonnets. And suddenly this boy, he, he stood up and started reciting that time of...